So today we are going to learn about another nematode, very important one, known as roundworm or the scientific name is Ascaris lambricoides. So let's start. So common name is uh, common roundworm. Geographical distribution, it is seen worldwide, especially in tropics. It is problem mainly in Southeast Asia, that is countries like China and India. Habitat, uh, they are seen in small intestines, especially jejunum. They maintain their position by their muscle tone. Morphology, the adult worm, uh, we have to remember that it is the largest intestinal nematode parasitizing man. And when fresh from intestine, it is usually light brown or pink in color, but gradually it changes to white. Uh, in shape, it is uh, rounded. It tapers at both ends, so something like this. The anterior end being thinner than the posterior, the mouth opens at anterior end and possesses three finely toothed lip, one dorsal and two ventral. Let us look at it and close. So this is the anterior end, this is the posterior end. As you can see, there is one dorsal lip and there are two uh, ventral lip which are more clear in this diagram. So there are three lips at the anterior end. The digestive and reproductive organs float inside the body cavity uh, and body cavity has a fluid and this fluid is very irritating. It is very toxic due to presence of a toxic substance known as Ascaron or Ascarase uh, which can lead to allergic manifestation in infected individuals. The lifespan is usually up to one year. Uh, adult worm, uh, both male and female are seen. As usual, the male worms are shorter compared to the female worms. Uh, the diameter of the male worm is also shorter compared to the female worms. It is 3 mm compared to the 5 mm of the female worm. Uh, the tail end is curved ventrally uh, in case of male worm while it is conical and straight in case of female worm. Let us go back to the posterior end. As you can see the male worm, the tail end is curved ventrally. Uh, you can see there are two spicules also at the posterior end while in female it is straight and conical shape. Right? You can see anus opening at both the places in posterior end there are two papillas at the posterior end of female so let us come back to the, our description the female is oviparous and it has an egg laying capacity of 20,000 eggs daily uh, the vulva opens at junction of anterior and middle third of the body and this section is very narrow that is known as vulvar waist so here i have shown you the male and female worm as you can see the male worm and female worm both has uh, the anterior end narrow right the posterior end of male worm is curved uh, with spicules and here you can see the vulvar waist uh, the narrow portion right the second morphological form is egg. Uh, there are uh, two types, fertilized and unfertilized. The fertilized egg is usually round in shape, while unfertilized egg they are more longer and narrower. Uh, this is brown in color, this is also brown in color. It has a thick uh, translucent uh, shell. Here there is a thinner shell compared to that. Uh, you can see a very large uh, unsegmented ovum. Uh, because it is unfertilized, uh, it has an atrophied uh, ovum. Clear crescentic area at each pole can be seen, uh, which is a clear space. Uh, and it floats in saturated solution of salt while uh, it does not the unfertilized egg does not float in saturated solution of salt so here i have shown you four pictures uh, on this side we have kept uh, 
fertilized and here we have kept unfertilized as you can see this is oval in shape this is more longer and narrower you can see that uh, here two terms are written corticated and decorticated here also corticated and decorticated sometimes uh, there is an albuminous protein coat the wavy line that you can see here that is albuminous coat covering the egg that we call is corticated uh, egg that is also seen here and sometimes that is not there so we call it as decorticated so now we have four varieties of uh, eggs both can be seen in a sample of uh, stool but if it shows only unfertilized egg what does that mean that only female worm is there there is no fertilization uh, has happened between male and female worm or either the host is infected only with female worm the life cycle there is no intermediate host there is only one host that is man so everything you can see in the man uh, so let us start with the life cycle the eggs are released in the feces and fertilized egg having this over my past but when they are freshly passed they are not infective so they develop in environment uh, or in soil in 10 to 14 days and that egg will now develop larva rapidity form larva and become embryonated egg and this larva uh, before it comes out it undergoes molting right uh, before hatching the second molting starts but cannot be completed it will complete it when it reaches the intestinal wall or liver of definitive host so if you uh, ingest uh, with food drink or raw vegetables this embryonated egg uh, the eggs will pass down to the duodenum where the juices will digest the egg shell and larva will come out and then this larva in small intestine does not directly develop into the worms it has to go through a migration route so from small intestine it will uh, burrow the mucous membrane and enter into the portal circulation where it will go to liver here sometimes the second molting uh, it will uh, be completed and finally they pass out of the liver they go to the right side of heart there it will enter into the lung circulation they go to the lung and here they mold twice again on fifth day and the tenth day now from lung they will enter into the bronchi trachea larynx pharynx again swallowed into esophagus again come to small intestine from where they have started and another molting happens here uh, on 25th to 30th day and here they acquire sexual maturity uh, in 6 to 10 weeks time and the male will fertilize the female and gravid female will discharge eggs within two months and cycle is repeated again now i uh, i know that you are overwhelmed by so much information there in this life cycle so i have made a good diagram uh, which will make it more clear and simple so let us start with this so we have started uh, from here that in feces we can see unfertilized as well as fertilized egg unfertilized egg it is basically dead end because it does not contain any live uh, ovum or embryo while fertilized egg has a unsegmented ovum with clear space around it this will develop into an embryonated egg the there will be an rapidity from larva which will develop it and if we ingest this form uh, that is the infective form embryonated egg if you ingest it then it will go uh, to the stomach here uh, it goes to the duodenum the juices will digest the egg shell the rapidity from larva will come out and then this larva will go to the 
portal vein. It enters the portal circulation, goes to the right side of liver, there it enters into the lung. Here two maltings will happen again and uh, then the larva will go to the trachea, larynx, epiglottis, swallowed back again and in stomach uh, it has now matured enough to develop into male and female worms uh, will develop in small intestine the male will fertilize the female and female will release uh, eggs right so i hope this makes uh, this more easy now there are two things that i want to clear here uh, that is malting one and two that happens here Malting 1 starts here uh, and completes here. Malting 2 starts but it is completed somewhere here when it is penetrating, right? Malting 3 and 4 happens in lung, right? And another malting will happen when it again come back to the intestine. So two malting uh, outside, two in lung and one in intestine. There is massive infection. Uh, if it is there, the larva may reach the general circulation and that would be very hazardous because now it has access to all the vital organs like kidney, brain, spinal cord. However, it is unable to grow there to mature into adult worm. They are destroyed but uh, it will cause some pathogenicity. So how we are infected, we swallow these embryonated eggs, sometimes inhalation of these eggs in dust, so it will directly reach to the pharynx and then swallowed. So infective agent, embryonated egg, portal of entry ingestion, that is elementary canal, migration is through lung and site of localization is small intestine. Pathogenicity is known as ascariasis. Now we have two forms. We have a larva which migrates and we have adult worm and we see pathogenicity caused by both of them. So let us first see the symptoms due to migrating larva. So the first uh, thing it will go to the lung and it causes pneumonia that is known as ascaris pneumonia or low flow syndrome. There will be fever, cough, breathlessness. Uh, you may see even blood tinge sputum. Eosinophilia and articular rash are seen in 20% of cases. However, if this larva, which is unusual, it enters into general circulation uh, beyond pulmonary capillaries, then uh, it causes ectopic lesion in brain, spinal cord, heart, and kidneys. The larva may also harbor other bacteria or microorganism from intestine to the other tissue. Let us see the what happens with adult worms. Uh, incubation period is 60 to 75 days. Uh, adult worm uh, acts by three mechanisms. The first mechanism is spoliative action because it is the largest worm. Uh, it requires lots of nutrition so it robs his host from the nutrition especially protein and vitamin and so if you are hyper infected especially children they suffer protein energy malnutrition it may even cause vitamin A deficiency which leads to night blindness uh, so anti enzymes anti triptych and anti peptic enzymes are liberated by ascaris to prevent the worm from digestion the second action the adult worm do is toxic action. We know that body fluid of Ascaris has Ascaron and it is very toxic and if it is released it causes allergic manifestation or typhoid like fever. The third action because it is the largest worm and if very heavy infection is there it may cause intussusception uh, or intestinal obstruction. It may penetrate through ulcers of uh, elementary canal as shown here. Uh, and in children, uh, because of small size of intestinal lumen, they are more susceptible to this uh, action. Now, if there is very heavy infection uh, in small intestine, the worm may go up into the stomach or may vomit it out through esophagus, mouth or nose. It may enter into respiratory passage and cause suffocation uh, or it may even enter bronchus 
from small intestine it can enter into the cecum and appendix and cause appendicitis or it may enter into bile duct and cause obstructive jaundice reach liver and cause liver abscesses so there are lots of ectopic sites also which uh, may be affected by adult worm so how we can diagnose this first of all find these adult worms either in stool or vomit we can even do uh, imaging with barium and there they uh, cast a string like shadow you can also find these eggs in uh, stool and bile uh, you can uh, do various saline emulsion of stool and various direct microscopic method using concentration or flotation techniques larva in the sputum can also be found while it is migrating through the lungs indirect aids you can see eosinophilia especially during the stage of migration of larva uh, scratch taste where ascaris antigen is used uh, to show the allergic reaction but it is again variable results are seen serological taste is useful especially in larval migration phase treatment uh, is usually thiamendazole mabendazole or arbendazole prophylaxis proper disposal of human feces uh, treatment of infected individuals uh, and education to children on sanitary laws and hygiene thank you so if you like our videos on parasitology or other subjects do subscribe to the channel so that you can get regular updates whenever i post a new video you can share the videos or share the channel links with your friends and colleagues thank you